So that's all, ladies and gentlemen. We must start the beginning and look at the color red. This red, as you know, is one of the most um, crimson, for example, is the color of love. It's the color of Christ's love. It's a sacrificial color. You get that only with people that are very spiritual indeed and are prepared uh, to give their life for truth. But they love passionately. Uh, they have a tremendous love. People that bring up very large families where there's tremendous love, you always find crimson there somewhere in their, in their lights that are around them. And color, of course, is the color of blood. And you know that if you're very healthy, it's rich in color. If you're not so healthy, then it's the other way around. Now, exactly the same thing uh, with the color of it. Crimson is the color of strength and energy, tremendous willpower. People born under these sort of colors or signs of where these colors come from are usually leaders, people that like to dominate but with life. Uh, one of the great things uh, about um, Mr. Churchill, in actual fact, was that he had reds in his uh, aura of both crimson but the opposites as well. He was what we call a red person. I know that he wouldn't have liked to have said that he was a red uh, because it's always <laughs> attached to the Communist Party. Uh, but nevertheless, his aura, I met him and so I know his colours and uh, they were red. Terrific reds of where anything to do with battle or leadership he was there, but anything opposite to that, uh, he, 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 he put it. There was very little blue in his aura, uh, lots of orange, but very, uh, <laughs> very lacking in various colours, but this terrific domination that you realize that he had to come to the world to play a particular part in our history. And that was the only part that he could play at that particular period. So therefore, we must look at these very seriously and realize what a tremendous part they do play in life. Uh, my sister always has crimson in the house. It's her favorite color. And um, uh, it's been a great help to her. Uh, everything has to be crimson, the carpet's crimson, the curtains are crimson. Um, she loves crimson. And whichever house she's been in, uh, she's always got rid of everything and put crimson there. Uh, because that is her. And she, uh, in her home, uh, you feel this terrific energy. She has a, a tremendous energy in the house. And people, mediums that go, always say, I'm so happy that I'm so comfortable there. And uh, various people that don't like reds uh, that enjoy her reds because they're this crimson red, you know, this cherry colour. And uh, it's a very delightful colour to have. And it is uh, healthy. Now, in healing, uh, people uh, that uh, are droopy, uh, very often or suffering with um, lack of um, energy uh, should somewhere have some scum up there. They should never have a dull red. For example, <clears throat> the red of those curtains is not the red that you would choose for a person uh, that is lacking in energy. It hasn't enough blood there. It needs that sort of crimson colour. Um, and uh, But you see, you've also got the opposite of where you can love tremendously but you can also be it. And therefore, people find, uh, and you do get this with people, uh, that red of where you can trust them so far, but you know that they're going to uh, be a poetry. And you see that color very strongly. Uh, there's very little this lasting love, but they will, in some way, uh, try to get back at you. And there are people uh, that will be very straight. They will, they will stab you while you're there and, uh, and enjoy it. But later on, we should be finding the greens that will do that when you're not looking. Entirely opposite, at the same time, for the type that will 
attack you. Uh, always when you're not there, when they're with you, uh, they will be as nice as they possibly can. They're waiting for the moment to really attack. Whereas the bed is not. They will be there and you'll notice. They'll let you know. And you realize that if they're going to attack you, they will attack you there and there. And it's the person that has to really have a go at you. They can't do with you until they don't like you. And uh, uh, they will like people like themselves, but they certainly won't get on with people with these very high passionate loves. They can't stand them uh, because they are the opposite. So it is important that we know that. So when you are really um, for healing, for example, if you have that type of person, which I'll teach you, uh, show you in a few moments about that, uh, you blend the colour with it, so that you think in lines different to that, that will blend with it. And gradually, as you do, you're softening the colour, and softening the, you're reaching them. Uh, the people that are with these very dark reds, they don't like people to be um, a tolerant. They can't stand people that are so patient. And yet you've got to be patient. They enjoy it to see you in a temper. And therefore, uh, you've got to be absolutely opposite. And uh, they won't like it. It doesn't matter. You must remain calm and sort of loving. It's a, they can't bear any word you say. You still say it. And you're blamed with it. The only way that you can deal. So you can see that in your lives, ladies and gentlemen, you should learn a great deal about the people you live with. So you know how to handle it. And a lot of you think you're doing the right thing and you're obviously many times doing the wrong thing. Because you haven't really mastered uh, exactly how to handle certain situations. So therefore, because people don't think about it. But you have to. And you come across people that you can love a great deal. And people will say, I don't know how you can get on with them. And you say, well, you know, I get on very well, but they've treated me all right. It's because you blend in some way. And with others, you don't. And it's so difficult, unless you understand it, to know. <coughs> so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, red, the great Christ color, it's the tremendous love. At its highest, it's crimson. It's one of those colors that stands out. It's terrific power and energy. And people that have it are leaders. Uh, they are people that lead um, because they want to lead but they will do it correctly. It's not for a selfish purpose. We'll touch on some of those later on. Uh, and spiritually, they're very highly evolved. So if a person comes back, always remember, look at the red, and people say red, lots say, ooh, I can't stand that color. But look again, you see, and find out which of the reds it is. And you'll find that there are so many different colors of red. You want this terrific, beautiful, loving colour, which is um, very bright indeed, very, very, very strong, and you can take an enormous amount. Now, this morning, this morning, in the um, meditation, I purposely asked you, those that were there, to go through the colour spectrum, to find out if any of you could do it. And I noticed several of you, when you really started with red, you found it terribly difficult to associate yourself with it. And I can tell by looking at you, you're having a very difficult time to do it. And you go on to others. Some of you seem to be lovely with yellow because you've been looking for daffodils and you've been loving them. And immediately you thought of yellow, you immediately thought of the daffodils. And you can see the daffodils coming over your head that you're thinking of, you see here. So you see how masterful thought is once you start. And uh, a lot of you, when uh, we came to the amethyst, found it very difficult. Uh, some of you were putting blue there, and others were putting a tint of red there, and you didn't seem to get, I think, the amethyst quite right. You either went too blue or too red. Um, but again, uh, it is because it is a combination of colors, and you will find it difficult. But you've also got to put in the meaning of the color, so that the color talks to you. And you've got to talk back to it. You see, in its language, 
so it understands and it will come up to tremendous and of course health wise all these colours are important to us. And when we go to orange, ladies and gentlemen, which is the colour next to um, the red, orange is the colour of the sun. And it is uh, full of energy. People that have nervous breakdowns, for example, orange should always be around. Um, they should have uh, orange everywhere as much as they possibly can. Not red. You need to have orange there. Because it's, it's too to do with the nerves. And um, it, it is it's a soothing colour and um, very helpful. A lot of people uh, went through a phase a while ago of having this orange colour, this sort of um, sandy colour, and brown. Lots of people put those two colours together, but it's like the, um, uh, the winter, you know, the autumn rather. People like the autumn colours. They mustn't forget that along with those autumn colours is that lovely bronze colour, which really has uh, that lovely sort of um, colour in it. Bronze is a colour of its own, but you get enormous amount of that with this delightful orange. Um, and you've got to have the two bright colours. It's amazing, isn't it? Our nature can provide us with colours of extreme and of bright. And when we wear them, they look absolutely awful. You know, it's as though nature's colours are totally different from the ones we try to get near to them, because they're not alive. They're not sending out the rays as we understand them. The trees send out rays of green. The roses send out the colour of their rose. And it's a colour, it's a vibration. You see. You've got to learn to be able to feel. And uh, by so doing, you learn a great deal about it. You have to bathe yourself in it. And go and see nature when you've got a garden beautiful garden full of all the different colours and look at it and you feel uplifted immediately. And if you look at, you know what it is, you can look at hollyhocks and uh, you can look at uh, foxgloves and where you pass them in the normal way and you stop to see them in a clump in the garden and you look at them, it tells you an entirely different story. Because in the garden they seem to be loved. When you go around and they're wild, people seem to forget them because they haven't given them the chance to grow properly to us. And yet they're talking to us. Look at me, I'm blue. Look at me, I'm purple. And you're sending all that lovely red. That's why they're purple and why they're blue. You see. They don't want to tell you that. So they're talking to you in their colour. Now you must talk back to them you see, in the colour. So that you learn these lovely colours and then, because you're able to do that, you'll find that colours will automatically build with you. When you look at it a person, the colours will come up. Because you've got the t this up here, their colour can feel itself. So you can see love talking in a language of colour. And nature talks to you in a language of colour. So you've got to interpret that. And you won't if you say, it's such a lovely red, or it's such a lovely red, that's just, it's such a lovely red. I always try to see if I can see something like that colour. Instead of realising, it's saying to you, I'm this colour because. See? Oh, how lovely you are. See? Totally different, it's such a lovely red, you see, it's flat. But how lovely you are. I think that's the nicest red I've seen for a long time. You must be a lovely flower. And it will, it will not to you if you're very late. It's a thought, again, blending with nature, blending with colour. Those are the vibrations. Wouldn't this be a horrible world, ladies and gentlemen, if everything was grey? No colour. If everything was just black and white. Instead of that, you've got this wonderful combination and that's how God wanted it. Like you and I, we're all different. We have our different way of living and living together. 
So therefore, we come to this color orange. It's the color that a healer has when they are vibrating to you. And you say, do you know, every time I'm in their presence, I feel absolutely up in the world. Uh, all my cares seem to leave me. And I feel so, and if you look at them properly, the healer, there it is, there's the color. That wonderful, living, vibrant color, as though the sun's come. A non personality like that. You're in a drab sort of way of thinking, and all at once someone comes in, others come in, hello. And an orange will come and say, hello. And all at once you say, hello. You lift it up. And that person will be manifesting that particular vibration. If, you, if it's false, you won't feel anything. You say, hello, you say, an hypocrite. <laughs> You'll feel it. You'll feel it. Then you get this lovely sort of moving up all the time. Uh, when people very often uh, are not there, and then all at once someone comes in and they accidentally lift the place. And sometimes they don't even talk, but you feel it. And you say, what a lovely person that is. And you haven't even spoken to them. Because there's something radiating from it. So we've got that radiance. Come back to the candle, don't we? The radiance. Mm -hmm. That's something that comes out and gives us that lovely radiance. So healers um, develop this warmth and develop this character which they have to have. They can't sort of say, Are you next, love? Sit here, love. <laughs> um, I do it. I do it my way, love. I don't need you to tell me. The spirit gives me. <laughs> and when they go away, they say, "Well, thank you very, very much." Next. <laughs> no, there's no warmth to it. And another one that's there says, "Oh, hello. Are you feeling better this week? You see, you look better." Let's see what we can do for you this week. So different. You find that there is a, a radiance there. And that is born, it's growing in them. And every time you go, you get closer and closer. And others can't even get closer. In fact, they'll very often say, I don't think that healer is doing me any good at all. They can be a marvelous healer because they just can't blend with them, you see. And the healer can't give enough of themselves, you see. Not vibrating enough. You see, healing is more than just being the channel to let it flow through. In healing, it's got to put that something in it, and that's a warmth, and a love, and a care, as if somebody cares, you see here. And so we get that. But therefore, the orange ray is, always does well for a nerve person, <coughs> anything. And if you have several cubicles, like we do, here in rooms is long, we have each one a different color. <coughs> So that eventually, uh, if a person is suffering with self illnesses, we say, oh, let them go into the blue room, or let them go into the green room, or let them go into the purple room, or let them go into the yellow room, you see here. So that you've got, we, we never have a red room, you know, because, uh, but we do throw a, a sort of red blanket occasionally over the plinth uh, to make it there, but we do have a red carpet. So that, uh, you can have the walls white as long as you've got something red, you see here, to brighten it up. And people do say, oh, I, 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 I was much better when I was in the green room, you see here. And you will find that. You'll find people will respond to various colors. And if you have them all white, you see, with nothing, they, they, it doesn't matter. They go to the healer, then the healer's got to provide it. If you have something that people warm to, you're just surprising how they will come back and say, you know, I went into the other room. Uh, I wasn't so happy in that. I wonder if I can go back into that other room. And uh, I think you'll find, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, it does good. Anyone that's recuperating uh, from a very serious illness, if you can place them in a room where there's lovely greens and uh, or uh, this uh, orange, not too bright, but uh, a paler orange, you'll find that they will blend with it very much. And the healer um, 
has to very often warm to them. They very often need uh, what I call sunshine. And when they suffer with these breakdowns, and it's no use you going with a, a miserable face because that makes them well. You've got to be a lovely beaming sort of, you know, warm thing, like the sun coming up, you know. Uh, I always sing that song, the sun has got his hat on, you know. And very often when um, I've had a patient that uh, has been really right down and uh, I, I think that they need, I usually go in and sing in the sun, it's got his hat on. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and they say, you're happy. I said, yes, I'm happy because you're here. And it's just surprising, you know, they go out beaming. And it's because you're helping there. And you've got to do that. You need the power, but you must put something else there. Well, you just can't use the power only. You've got to have what they call that lovely bedside manner. You know, when we talk of doctors, oh, it's very nice. It's got his lovely bedside manner. And you get another one that says, oh, is it him, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or is it she? You've got to have these sorts of differences. However clever you are, you do need to warn people. It's just surprising uh, how it goes. So therefore, uh, puff, uh, orange, ladies and gentlemen, has energy. And it's very good for um, lifting people up. And it is very good also uh, for people uh, that are suffering very much with um, rheumatoid arthritis and um, uh, people that have lots of bone trouble. Uh, if they could, um, um, you know, a lot of the, or what we call the orange ray could do them a lot of good. Um, but again, you can deal with that as you go along. Now the colour we're now going to deal with is the yellow ray, which is the gold ray, which is the highest spiritual colour. Because it's the colour of wisdom. And in development, you need to see yellow. If you don't see yellow, uh, the person needs then to be trained in another way altogether. If you're going to have to train now as a medium, you must have that yellow there. And if they don't, you've got to train them so eventually it comes. That's why we concentrate on spiritual growth. All right. Spiritual growth is light. So therefore, yellow is the colour of wisdom. I told you about Solomon. Solomon asked for wisdom, and uh, he was a very wise man. Don't forget the three wise men as well. Don't forget that Jesus, when in prayer, one could see this glow around the head, and that is true. And it's quite correct. The more sincere you are, the more you see this lift. A lot of people, they radiate. If you look close at them, you'll find that they were shy, you see. And that means that they have got wisdom. So it is. And it's always around here. Never around there, because there's nothing open. There's no use being wide around your knees. It's got to come up, you see. Here, in your thinking and in your mind. And um, it's beautiful to see. Now, you've got to practice being wise and be, by using your mind correctly. It's like um, it's like passing through a period of purification and then finding the answer to many spiritual things. And this prayer, this link with God, and there it is, it comes around. And uh, you will see it, and it's definitely gold in cup, we call it the yellow gray. There are people that are very tolerant. <coughs> uh, a yellow person is tolerant and very patient, because they have to be. Um, the opposite of that is, of course, is intolerance. And therefore, the dirty yellows are the people that are untrustworthy, and uh, also they are intolerant. They, uh, they don't like anyone telling them anything for their own good. And you'll find that these opposites in yellow um, will um, be very much in their, in their life. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, everything has its duality. There you have wisdom, you have the opposite, 
you have tolerance, you have intolerance, and you have people uh, that will always complain that are dirty yellows. They've got to complain. I've been, I've been in touch with people that natter, 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 always about themselves and how unhappy they are and how the family doesn't care about them. You know, have you come across that? The world and no matter how you go and try to help them, it's always you that's wrong, they're right. And uh, you can have them immediately, uh, someone goes in that really loves them and trying to help them. They don't want it. You're wasting your time and yet you've still got to try. So you go in beaming and sort of everything they talk about, you try to bring a sense of an attitude to it. Terribly difficult, but you've got to keep praying that you can do it. You have the most difficult job because they're opposites, you see, completely opposite. And it's the most <coughs> trying and devastating time for anyone to have to enjoy. But there it is. So there you have it. And you have that type of person. Um, I would, in treating someone like that, first of all, um, it's part of their mental makeup. I would certainly <coughs> put gold there. I would try to get um, gold, very beautiful gold. And you know, when you come to think about it, uh, when our queen or king is crowned, the crown is a gold. When they're anointed, uh, it is a golden spoon. And it's always gold. It's a symbol uh, of being anointed. So it is the highest spiritual uh, colour, and um, gold, therefore, is very important. You need to see it in people's orders. Now, I know that many of you uh, like people to give you these colours, and a lot of people will tell you what colours they think you need. But you're much better having an honest answer, so you can deal with this, rather than be told you have a colour that isn't quite gold. Um, uh, so that you can reach for it, you see here, yeah? and be told how you can come to this purification so that you can reach out and gain from those three experiences. A red comes from the planet Mars. So you realize, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that um, uh, the um, Mars is the red planet. Usually, the vibrations from Mars, which come, are the same vibrations as this red, the middle red, uh, that is the vibration of red. So people that are uh, under Mars will have more of that color than another. That means they, they use the color up. Doesn't mean to say that they're dominated by it because they can be use it in the wrong way. So instead of the scarlet, accepting that they are to lead, they'll go opposite to it. And that means you've got to train them back again. So uh, one has to remember um, those sort of things. The orange color, of course, is the planet, the sun. So you come under uh, the direction of the sun. You're born with the sun's rays uh, shining, and therefore people that are born with under that the sun and this color, mean that they are born uh, to share their wisdom with people. They should never be closed away. They should never be isolated. They should never be a person that pulls away. They should be a people that must be among people. And they must serve. And they must be wise. And they must have learned. And they must receive inspiration. And. Uh, but if they do, don't, they go right the opposite way, you see. And by so doing, they become the opposite to everything that they should be. And a lot of people go like that. Because, you see, the choice is theirs. Once you've got it, how are you going to use it? And if you use it incorrectly, you go completely opposite. Do you understand that? Good. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, Mercury is the planet where this lovely yellow comes from, and because that's where the great minds of the spirit come. That's where they used to say our spirit guides came from Mercury. 
simply because uh, it was uh, a very high vibration and uh, it is the, it was always known as uh, the planet of the high spiritual uh, guides. So we should have the wise ones from there. So you have to develop this terrific color and you will find that there is this drawing power uh, to Mercury on its spiritual level. Now all these things, those gentlemen, have to be tried and tested uh, by our own groups. And you find uh, that by so doing, understanding it in its correct, I think ultimately, and I mean this very sincerely, that there will come a time when healers will not be necessary because we shall find the answer by vibration mm -hmm. and color and rays. That is why you're getting at the moment, isn't it, this, um, what do you call it, the, the, the light ray that they're using in healing now. Now that will be, because the spirit people always have said over many and that you will have treatment always like that and drugs will be no more. You'll be taught how to live taking with you each day the various things that grow so that you will have nature within you and around you and ultimately the doctors uh, with all their sorts of prescriptions of aspirin and various things which some of us have to take <laughs> um, are, is because they have not yet learned but they are coming to it. One thing will lead to another and the spiritualist healer is why it's so important today and that's why we're being attacked. And not because the job is wrong, and the, the, but because they, they've got to find out what's wrong with it to put it right. Can you understand what we mean? You see, that's why tomorrow I want you to see, and you've already seen uh, one lot of healing, of where the, the doctor was certainly doing things which I had this morning before they left. And um, so if I, my hearing gets better, you'll know. <laughs> So I don't say what, <laughs> you'll know. Um, I mean that's the nicest way. Um, and so tomorrow you'll see a different type of healing altogether uh, under trance. And uh, you have to ask the questions of which the medical people are. They're saying there's no need for that. We accept that this can be done. And, uh, but we can't accept that the knife is necessary because it's better in our hands because we know how to use it, you see there. So we have to go through that. And that's the reason I keep saying to you, you must watch just for yourself. But have the knowledge there to compare it. Don't say, I don't believe in this, unless you can replace it with something else. <coughs> so you have to think. Do you understand that? And I want you, I can't give you more than I've given you this week to go away and think about it. That's what I want you to do, you see, every aspect altogether. Because if trance is going to be of any use to us, we must try and understand what they can do. And try to realize what we can do without it. And if you can do it without it, then fine. But you'll find that you must make up your own mind, you see, on these matters. Trance must always stand on his own feet. It must be masterful. As Jesus was a trans medium, all these people were trans mediums. Uh, Socrates was a trans medium. Pythagoras was a, a trans medium. In fact, he taught trans. So, if he can do it, I don't know why we should do it. He was doing it five or seven thousand years ago. They were doing it. So, I think after all that time, they would have found out if it was wrong or not, and we should have been all right now. Anyway, we've got to put it all right. But can you see why things are happening? because we are guiding them to what one day they will accept and find a way of dealing with it. So that we'll just walk through a room, be battered with all sorts of vibrations and come out the other end, kill her. That's exactly what's going to happen. But then you see what they'll say to you, now don't go and start smoking again, because if you come back and you've done it again, you shan't give the treatment. So that will stop you. And uh, <laughs> that's the only way they'll do it. Anyway, and did you know the healers in the past, if they healed you, which they did, 
They would heal you twice. They wouldn't heal you the third time. Because they said, no, you're obviously doing something wrong. And if you're going to do it wrong, you're wasting my time and I'm wasting yours. Go and kill this. <laughs> Commit suicide. And that's the way it's going to get. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, but you see now about colour. And I take the stage further now. And you heard our pianist playing. And although they're raising this darn uh, middle C, <coughs> which uh, is there. Money this needs to be playing, this needs to be done. Middle C, ladies and gentlemen, the vibrations of middle C are exactly the same vibrations as the color red. Now isn't that interesting? So red and C of the middle notes of the piano are identical. A scientific agreement is accepted as a fact. So therefore, we realize that vibration is a fact. Everything is vibrating. And coming from various vibrations, you are seeing color. Because color is the makeup of everything. And the interesting thing about it is that the vibrations from Mars are exactly the same as the note that vibrates with C and also the color red. So we now know that there is an association between Mars, the note C, and the color red. Now I don't think you can get much better than that. And so we realize there is a link with everything. You see, God hasn't been a haphazard about it. That's why there's a God, you see? Because there's a perfect law. And man doesn't have to break that law, because if he does, he makes a mess of it. You see, look what they do with the atom and all this nuclear thing. They're interfering with natural law. So you get death, destruction. Whereas we can use it to bring great power. And that's what mediums are doing, and that's what our healing is doing, you see. Where there's destruction, we can use the same vibration to heal but using it onto a spiritual level. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it is interesting. Have you noticed that there are seven notes? And we have seven colors of the spectrum. But if you take an object of using find that there are 12 notes. There are 12 months of the year. There are 12 signs of the zodiac. They say there are 13, but uh, that's never been used properly. Everything 19, for example, is the most remarkable uh, mystic uh, number. There are various numbers there's the seven pillars of wisdom. The time will come when the earth, the globe here, will be divided into seven states. And there will be, like, for example, the um, common market, the European thing. The seven states, the seven states, gentlemen, all over the world will take place. And then there will be harmony in the world. There's this harmony now, because everything is away from the natural blending of lights. And that's why we have these problems. And the European community will grow into other places. Where you see at the moment, why is it happening uh, that the Russian Empire, as we understood it, the Soviet Union, is all breaking up? Because it will be built. And there will be seven states. They will become one united group. You can't, you see, you can't stop what's coming. It's going to come. And the longer we hold it back, the worse it's going to be. Because it still will come. Because it's the only solution. So we have people that are coming to this world 
And although they appear to be wrong, they're really right, but in different ways. So, ladies and gentlemen, what is the sound of life? If you go to the police, they'll say, mm -hmm. They're bringing all the seven notes into one. And they find that key note that links them all together into a heart. And that is true. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. And God said, let there be light. So the power behind it all is this master power we call God. And God vibrates. Why did I take you, ladies and gentlemen, to the uh, tree to learn to show you to vibrate? Why did I say to you, I want you to feel the tree talking to you? Because the tree in you were brought into being like everything else at the same time through the thought of God. And we are the thoughts of God materialized because of vibration. And God has linked it all together. That's why we harmonize together. And what do you have to have in a circle? Harmony. Why do you all have to link up together in prayer? Why do we need the spirit world? So the spirit world vibrations and our vibrations blend as one. And when do the thoughts of the spirit come along the vibration of love? Everything's keeping it together. Nothing is, is apart from each other. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have got the moment to bring the world. How are you going to do it? You've got the Japanese that are um, doing all what they're doing. Uh, getting rid of all our fish and things like that, and the horror of which is taking place, you've got the world, you've got all this thing happening. It's all against natural law. What we need to do is to find out by, ex by tuning in to this of what they require so that we can help to keep the life because each life should be blending together. And we will eventually come to it. But during the period of waiting, there's massacre and horrifying events. And you see, even the common market, ladies and gentlemen, uh, look at the problems that have been. You will have problems until they all come together at one mind, you see. And then once you have, it's got to spread. So eventually, you'll have a world government with each separate party belonging to the other, so that there's a uniting of nations. And when we've got that, we shall then find the spirit world will be here. Because eventually, we go back to the past, of when we were led by the prophets, the seers, the spirits. That's where the guidance will come from. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we're way down here at the boat, just Piling it on. We've got all the agony of the nerves. Clearly the way. You see? And if we fail, well, we've then got to keep starting all over again. But we are going to fail other girls and boys. So we're going to succeed. And where we succeed is we have to find the part we have to play, both in your life, your physical life, you've got to see you're doing that right. And when the time comes, you don't let your physical life so hold you down that you can't express yourself spiritually because the other side of you is now lost. But you see, your spirit belongs inside that body and they're inseparable. But each has got to find its own level together. And you can't do all material unless you allow the spiritual also to be there. Because you can't live without both being together. That's why you're here on the earth. And therefore, you've got to find it yourself. So, ladies and gentlemen, colour is vibration and sound. Right at the beginning, the sound came. 
Everything is a thought of God that is materializing. And we have come into this time, you and I, everyone else, that's been spiritually moved. We are here to play our part spiritually, however little you may think you do. It's enough for, for the spirit people to want to hear. So that you play your part. And now you see, why have I, we now come to the fact which the spirit people are telling us that we must do, is why are we asking you to harmonize your body with the spirit? Why are we now thinking before meditation of getting you right spiritually, mentally, and physically so that you can meditate properly? Why do we now say to you we've got to change our attitude to development because in the past it was psychic development, now we're talking about spiritual development, so that we can say to you, get your mind, your body, physically together, get these three things together, and then you'll find by bringing them together through proper breathing, breathing together through proper actions, putting everything together so there's harmony and there's movement, and all these movements that I have, they're already in the spirit world. This is new. They've known about it for countless years. If you read up the Roman Empire, they used to have all these wonderful dances of where there was wonderful, smooth movements. If you take Barry, for example, and you see those wonderful movements uh, that they had, they're wonderful movements. And so we have got to do the same thing. Our body, our spirit, the, the soul, need those movements. They need us to vibrate correctly on high level. So that what we're getting all the time are these wonderful movements. Why do we use music? Because music is vibration. But then you've got to learn to use your body and your mind and your soul without music. So that you're doing it naturally. And that's why development is there. All the things that you do is training you to use the power naturally. But you have to go stage by stage to handle it until you've got it right. And then it all comes together. Now what I would like to see, you see, is when some of you have gone through your courses and got rid of all your negative attitudes, if we all find a place which is shut off from everywhere yeah. and live spiritualism for a fortnight without noise, without all these things, and dwell within oneself spiritually and open up the hills of the time. In fact, to be sometimes in contact with the spirit an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, with your spirit being healed, your spirit is learning to express. Because it is true to say that when we pass through traumatic experiences, you know it affects our nerves, you now know it also affects the inner body. And the body very often needs to break away from everything that is physical, everything that is of a torment, so that we can rest within the temple, expressing ourselves accurately. And then we can get cleansed. And then we come back and get uncleansed again. <laughs> but that's life. But we should be able to come away from all those experiences and give ourselves entirely uh, to the Spirit and allow the vibrations of the Spirit to flow through. So, this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to learn and vibrate. I want you, when you do it tomorrow morning, I want everyone to be up so we can have 8 o'clock properly. Now, I want everybody outside. Now, God, a nice day. Um, I'm just for your benefit. Um, I want everybody outside vibrating yourself. Do what you feel you want to do. Shake yourself out. <clears throat> Take the exercises. And then when you feel you're ready, move quietly. Don't chatter. Move quietly. You don't need you. 
You've got 24 hours to talk. Give this time without talking, silently, and move into the sanctuary and take a seat away from somebody else and be your own world. And raise your eyes to God. And tomorrow morning, I want everybody to tell God what you think about God. And what you think about yourself. And there you're sitting down saying, I was so good to you, God. Look what I give you. You know, I just put half a crown on the plate. Or well, maybe I had half a crown. A few shillings on the plate or something like that. Nothing at all. Go to God and say, God, I can't even live with myself. So how can I live with everybody else? Will you help me, please? And God will touch you. And that's what I want you to do. That's too. Don't sort of tell, tell God how marvelous you are. Let God find out through you by your thoughts. You don't have to tell God. God knows. So go and admit. You cry and wail and do what you like. We shan't take any notice of you. Thanks. We shan't let you paint. We shan't take any notice. But I shan't. <laughs> and if anybody comes to you already, you can be assured. I can tell them to stay where they are. And you can cry and do what you like. You won't get any sympathy. You can't sympathize with a person that's with God. God's the one to sympathize with you. Get it out. Get it away. Very quiet. You feel so much better. What's the time? It's just 11. I'll be honest. Pardon? Like a brownie. Yeah. 
And it's a very difficult color. It's um, fitted blues. You don't really want to pale blues. Those pale blues can be very wishy-washy, you know. I like the deep blue. Um, the sky blue is very good. And the deep blue, the rock we call the royal blue, is a marvelous blue to see with people. It stands out. It's a gorgeous blue. Um, and those are the blues, like a beautiful blue velvet or a blue satin. You've seen those lovely blues with satin. But they have to be in those central to the slightly lighter blue without it being too pale. If you've got a very pale blue that surrounds the body like a grey blue, uh, which is, uh, you're coming on to the physical uh, colours there, but the sort of blues, you can have a blue with very dark grey in it. Uh, that is not the best of blues to see. It's a person that's got a rather peculiar attitude to life. Um, they don't like music. They don't like fun. They don't like. Uh, they don't want to be spoiled. They they're very funny people. Uh, they if you put anything on uh, that's a little gay or a little happy, they seem to feel that that's an insult, you know, here. You should take life very seriously. They got the blues. And uh, they got usually got really A person uh, that grumbles a lot, um, you can get a blue in there and a brown. A person is always saying, I want. I have come across those people. Uh, you give them something, you say, it isn't what I wanted, I wanted something else. You know what I mean? They always want, that brown's there because they're changeable, you see here. And you'll take them tomorrow, what they asked for, and they'll say, I didn't feel like it, I really wanted it yesterday. I wanted so-and-so today. And uh, uh, you've got to look it up. What you have to do with those sorts of people is either to take them in the future and start keeping saying, oh, you know, later on you'll be able to do all these sorts of things. And uh, start doing it. Then the brown starts coming up, you see here. And um, uh, you find their minds changing. But you see, it's taken us over an hour, you see, and we've only really partially dealt with three colours. So how can you do it in one lecture? It's, it's impossible. And you've got to take people through it. They've got to learn how to feel blue. And feel crimson, and feel orange, and feel these colours. You've got to be it, you see. Here. So you manifest it, you see, comes up. And uh, <laughs> love. And be very touchy with some of these colours, especially lilac. Uh, people seem to think that lilac is a very good colour. It isn't really. It's, um, it's what we call a, a failing person who's trying to be live up to a standard and find it difficult. And they fail because it's neither one thing or the other. Amethyst is the colour, so I love amethyst. In fact, I, I prefer amethyst, really, to um, purple. Um, because there's something you can see through it. I, I like it because you can see through it. You know? And it's a lovely colour because it's clear. And I, I find when I see people with this colour, and there are people that have it, not in a lot of, not a, a mass of it, but in, no, and usually people that you can see through. I find that uh, uh, they can't tell a lie, or they can't, you know, and they, they're like that. And I always feel that they're so good and honest that uh, you're prepared to help them because they'll get to the top and they won't lose it. They'll always have that something that's always very clear and very right. Well, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Have your tea and your coffee, and then come back. Uh, the only thing I like about pills was instead of having a cup of tea, we just suck something, you know. <laughs> then we start to go out and have fresh fresh air. Nice if you took your tea and your coffee and went out of the fresh air.